Portland, Oregon, I took up hiking and backpacking. It was mandatory, amen? You move into the city, you might as well go by the nearest REI and get some hiking boots, get a uh, sleeping bag that's a sustained uh, freezing temperatures. Uh, don't buy an umbrella, amen? Nobody uses an umbrella in one of the wettest places in the continental US, don't buy that. But definitely prepare to hit the trails. I remember one hiking trip that I went on with four friends. We were gonna primitive camp, which means that you, you pack everything in um, on your back and that you try, you make a commitment to try to minimally impact the land. So the, the mantra is you leave it better than how you found it. Um, and so we planned the trip. It was fairly short, so it was gonna be four days, three nights. We divvied up the packing responsibilities. So who has the tent? Check. Who has coffee? Amen. That was that, that's a debatable priority, amen. But check, coffee. Um, who has dishes and, and pots and pans or for cooking? Check. Who has the water purification plan? That was me. Check. So we went on our trip. We were having a wonderful time. And about the third, the very morning of the third day, so we still had two full days of hiking and one night left, we realized the extent to which we were running out of food. Amen? Um, in our altitude exuberance, we had burned through our food faster than what we had anticipated. You know, it's a short trip, we thought. Why ration? Well, turns out you ration so that you won't run out of food, amen? So the very last night, the five of us split a ramen packet of noodles and a half a jar of peanut butter. Just passed it around, and we had a 14-mile hike the next day back to our vehicles. So it was a really long hike because we had a quarter of a jar of peanut butter between us. And by the time we got back to our car, I have never, not before nor since, been as hungry as I was in that moment. We promised ourselves, as we dreamt about food the whole way down, that whatever establishment made itself known that what served food, we would go there as soon as possible. And sure enough, it was like a mom and pop hamburger joint. And so we walk in and we order juicy hamburgers and salty fries and a little bonus leaf of lettuce to try to make it feel all, all right, amen? I have never before in my life, never before nor since, taste anything as good, as absolutely delicious, as mind-blowingly nourishing as that hamburger? Was it because it was rated the top hamburger in the Northwest? No. Why was it so delicious? It was there. Amen. Thanks, Carl. Because I was empty. I was lack. I had this unusual experience of not having more than I needed precisely when I wanted it. Now I realize this, this is a first world engagement with hunger and with need. This is not what people in Aleppo, Syria are facing day in, day out, right? Food shortages and bombs dropping, I get that. Or the 11.8% of people within the Commonwealth of Virginia who face daily something called food scarcity, which is, means at times they don't know where their next meal is gonna come from. 45% of those folks, almost a million people, are children. So I, I, I own that this was a mere brush with hunger and not what many of God's children face, but still it had a pretty deep effect on me. And I remember the five of us sitting around the table and the food arrived and we didn't just dive in. We just we paused for a moment and we just sat with the hunger a little bit longer. And someone said, shouldn't we pray? Actually, this was Portland, so they said something like, shouldn't we give thanks to the universe? Amen? And they, I was like the only out Christian, so they said, don't you pray, do you do it? <laughs> and so before before we met that hunger, we stopped and we gave thanks. Do you know that God can teach us 
through experiences, when we are lacking or in need, when we are at a loss, so deeply what it means to be profoundly grateful. And really, isn't that what the whole backdrop to this national holiday that we're about